the teen talk is was my column and that's when I was a high school senior and this was page 4c the Wichita Beacon Wednesday March 27 I had others but I can't find them and I hate showing this whole thing because see the column right next to me it's about Tammy Pistotnik who was a hamburger tester and she tasted hamburgers went around ate the uh, hamburgers and malts and condiments and wrote about it and most of the time when I show this people ask how do I get to be a hamburger tester that's what I want to do so <clears throat> okay inverted pyramid journalism that's what most people read um, it was in print papers back then but now mostly online you write the headline, subheadline, the lead, maybe one or two paragraphs. This is what I learned, the nut graph. Context, good stuff. This is the story. And then more details. And then the bottom stuff, maybe you really like the writer, but the editors may edit out, and they usually cut from the bottom up. That's why they call it inverted pyramid. An example I'm going to give is from something that just recently happened, Super Bowl 57. So, I actually wrote this all out, but I'm just going to touch on it. So, the headline, Super Bowl 57, February 2023 outcome, Kansas City Chiefs World Champions. So, then the lead, the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. They won on a 27-yard field goal with eight seconds remaining. Uh, lifted the Chiefs over the Philadelphia Eagles by score of 38-35. So then you get to the nut graph and you would give more information. Game most valuable player Patrick Mahomes the second threw three touchdown passes and was not sacked um, by the Eagles defense that had the third most sacks in a season in NFL history. So Chiefs offensive line did very good. <clears throat> I would talk about Andy Reid, the head coach, and called most of the offensive plays. Dave Tobe, the special teams coach, <clears throat> and Steve Spagnola, the defensive uh, coordinator. And maybe mention Clark Hunt and the Hunt family, Lamar Hunt. Um, now, the end... A little bit of suspense, what I'd like to do, but this kind of stuff that would get cut. Uh, the kicker had missed a field goal earlier. It would already be three points up, but he missed a field goal. Plus, about a minute and a half earlier, they had told Jarek McKinnon not to score. He was All he had to take was one more step, he would have been in the end zone. He stopped. He stopped a yard short of the end zone to take off that 90 seconds. So they would either win or not win on the field goal. And earlier in the season, the kicker missed both extra points and field goals because they had problems with the ball, the holder. <clears throat> and the kicker actually was replaced for several games uh, by uh, another, they had to bring in another kicker because he was hurt. <clears throat> so here we are at the suspense. <clears throat> Is the gamble going to play off or are they going to say, Hey, they should have let McKinnon score. So, then, now, this is uh, John Franklin's writing for story. Two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. I read this almost 40 years ago, and it changed my writing life. Now, here is a uh, story he includes in the book, and includes his outline. Major Complication. And, you know, this was published over five days in a uh, major newspaper and got lots of readers. <clears throat> and he focused on one, one guy. Now, here's the thing. What I just went over, um, Franklin says, and I think I'm quoting it correctly from memory, most news stories, that is the inverted pyramid journalism, story. Most uh, news stories are endings without beginnings attached. But a feature story includes that beginning. So it's not the inverted pyramid. 
It's more like this. There is a development based on complications. <clears throat> now, what I would do in this uh, Super Bowl story is have the different participants in the kick. Um, the first day would be the context. How much money is involved, how much people's interested. Most watched television event, usually year after year. Super Bowl context. Well then, <laughs> I would do a story about Dave Tobe, the special teams coach. Used to be special team coach for the Chicago Bears and uh, the uh, they had the best kick returner of all time okay I forgot to write down James Winchester and uh, he's what's called the long snapper he snaps the ball back <clears throat> seven or eight yards depending on however they want on the particular kick so he's the center. The holder, Tommy Townsend. You got to keep the laces not to the side. It wobbles off to the side. I was a kicker. Uh, Greater Wichita Junior Football League more than 50 years ago. Gosh, 53 years ago. And um, I finished second in kicking. It was good. It was harder to kick an extra point than run it and uh, at least when you're a you know, high school freshman and uh, so we got two points if I made my kick but they only got one if we ran it in because people don't appreciate how hard it is you've got to have a good center you've got to have a good holder and you've got to have a good kicker well then Harrison Butker was the kicker oh yeah there's we've got the quote right there most news stories are endings without beginnings attached. So, <clears throat> why did Dave Tobe become a special teams coach? Why did Winchester become a long snapper? Why did Tommy Townsend become a kick holder? And why did Harrison Butker become a kicker? We tell their life stories. Now, Butker has part of his story is a very sad story by his father. Each of them have really legitimate, good stories that <laughs> really haven't been told together. By the way, I don't think I'll write this, so uh, I've been in poor health, and if I just don't have the energy, and if you have the energy, well, you go ahead and, and write it. Um, so, what, if you can't do it... <clears throat> After my uh, BTK book, Nightmare in Wichita, was published, over the next almost four years, I am not exaggerating this number, 100 homicide detectives contacted me directly or indirectly. Sometimes uh, people would contact me on behalf of the detective and say, I have to call this detective. And they all had stories they thought I should write about. And I got to where I actually wrote a book, and I'm later going to self-publish, but it's about how to write your own story. If you're writing either a true crime story or a memoir uh, or a novel. Because a lot of these old cops uh, would end up writing novels. They did write, several of them did write novels. And the reason why they did that is because they wanted to tell stories they couldn't, they didn't feel like, they, want, they didn't want their kids to know how much they cheated on their mother and that kind of stuff. So. They would write about a fictional homicide detective who uh, had lots of extra girlfriends on the side. So, um, <clears throat> uh, I guess that's it for this little session here. But, uh, inverted pyramid, very common journalism. You go down, to, you got to have the who, what, where, when, why, and so forth. Presume you already know that, but maybe I should have written all that out too. Uh, feature story, it's just uh, taking that and it's kind of the reverse because what would be cut off, well, that's the interesting story. That's the word you talk about Dave Tobe and Tommy Townsend, Jane Winchester, and Harrison Butker. <clears throat> Columns are a completely different thing. Uh, 
It was recently pointed out, I wrote, this is back in 72 when I wrote this, it wasn't published till 74. It was recently pointed out to me that although the elders want us to participate in the system, for our ideas to make it strong, we must first always ask the question, may we be militant, please? Uh, I think the young people today don't even ask. <clears throat> then now you get in the professional world, you got to follow the rules. And you may say, well, I, I don't think that's good. But uh, whatever, whoever you're writing for, I remember my dad told me when I was a boy, son, the first thing he told me in the Army was there's the right way, the wrong way, and the Army way, and you're going to do it in the Army way when you're in the Army. So wherever you work, you write it that way. And then you may get paid to write for the court of, uh, clients that appear in the Court of Appeals. So, and again, there's 20 men named Robert Beatty in this region. So there might be a Robert Beatty from Wichita, but it's not me. I'm on YouTube, and I have my own webpage.